Have you ever received a phishing email with a PDF or Word document attached and wondered, one, is this malicious? And two, what would happen if I did open this file? Stick around while we answer these questions and more today on the very first episode of the 12 Days of Cyber Defense. Welcome everyone to a brand new mini series, The 12 Days of Cyber Defense. For those who don't know me, my name is John Hubbard and I am a certified instructor with the SANS Institute and course author in the Blue Team Operations curriculum. I also host the brand new cyber defense oriented Blueprint podcast, which is available now. Since many of us are staying around this holiday season, I thought I'd use the extra time to try out something new. I'm going to be creating a 12 part series with some basic fundamental skills for cyber defense. Uh, this series is for those who might be new to a SOC or just wanna understand what working in a SOC is like. So we're gonna go over some basic concepts, tools, and mindsets that will help you get started on your cyber defense journey. In this first episode, we're going to jump right in and tackle a potentially intimidating topic, and that is malware. Uh, over the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to talk about how to address PDF files and Word documents and extract malicious indicators from within them uh, without endangering yourself or your PC. This is something that happens nearly all day, every day in security operations centers around the world. Users report phishing and your job as a security analyst is going to be to figure out if those files are indeed malicious and to do so safely, quickly, and accurately. So without further ado, let's jump in and get started. So when getting into malware analysis, the first thing you need to do is get yourself a virtual machine. You never ever want to play with any kind of malicious files on your own actual computer, of course, or any computer you care about. So the easiest way to seclude malicious files in a safe space is to put them in a virtual machine and then isolate that virtual machine, of course, from the rest of your network and your own computer where possible. So the virtual machine I recommend is Remnix. It is a virtual machine that is full of reverse engineering tools, ready to go, pre-made for you. It's actually the virtual machine used in the Forensic 610 course for SANS, uh, created by Lenny Zeltzer. So awesome place to start. I would highly recommend downloading this first. You can go to remnix.org and go to distro and then click on this download and then grab the OVA file here. I found the Google Drive link was much faster to download than the uh, primary link. From here, you will get an OVA file. You can double click it and load it up into VMware Workstation or Player or VirtualBox or whatever it is that you're trying to use. And when you do that, you will be dumped here into a virtual machine with Linux and it has preloaded inside of it a whole bunch of malware tools ready to go. Now we're just gonna be doing some basic stuff today. So we're gonna be looking at a PDF file and we're gonna be looking at a Microsoft Office document, uh, both commonly used for phishing. To get started here, I pulled up two of my favorite sandbox websites. One of those is hybridanalysis.com and the other one is AnyRun. The first file we're gonna look at is from AnyRun. And what I did here just to find the sample is I went into the search uh, and I typed in, I want to find a file, I want to find an Adobe PDF, and I want a malicious verdict. And so I went in here and I found a file called Recent Purchase uh, from the 4th of December, 2020, uh, that we're going to look at here. And I could open this and I could get some very quick, fast answers, but I want to show you the manual way of doing it. So we downloaded that file and it is in my downloads folder here. We're going to have to unzip it and the password is always infected for sites like this when you download them. They often password protect them so you don't accidentally run the file if you put it on a different machine that isn't safe for malware investigation. All right, there we go. We have our PDF file. Now, recentpurchase.pdf is probably malicious. So we're trying to avoid opening it and there's a easy way to avoid opening this and still kind of extracting what might be inside. Most PDFs, well, maybe not most, but many, many uh, malicious PDFs are purely just a link that says someone shared a file to you here, please click on this thing. And so we want to extract that link and we don't want to open the PDF because it could conceivably be some sort of exploit. So we're going to try to extract that link without that, without opening it. One of the easy ways that we can do this is we can use the strings command. Strings is a tool that's built into basically every Linux 
And all you need to do is type the word strings and then you need to fill it in with the file name like that right there. I often pipe this to less because the output of strings is going to be every sequence of printable ASCII characters that is in that file. So a PDF is actually a lot of just text that can be easily interpreted. As you see here, there is a uh, up at the top PDF 1.7 and some other stuff that may or may not be easy to interpret. Now, the thing about strings with PDFs in specific, uh, you can often find URLs in a PDF purely by looking at the strings because it's a link. It's printable text and it shows up in the PDF. So one of the dumb ways to do this that you can get a very fast answer without having a sandbox or anything like that is just looking for the letters HTTP anywhere in the strings of a PDF. So to do that, you type strings and then the name of the file, grep, and then HTTP. If you're not familiar with grep, it's just saying, don't show me any lines of output unless they contain, and in our case, we're typing HTTP because we're looking for a link. So if we hit enter on this, boom, there you go. It's that easy. This PDF probably is a malicious uh, phishing attempt to get people to go to that link right there. And so if you're working in the SOC, you just got this PDF and you don't want to open it and you don't have a sandbox and you don't have any other way of doing it. This is the manual, fast and easy way of extracting a link from a PDF without having any kind of danger involved. Uh, you're not opening this in any way. You're just kind of parsing through bite by bite looking for text. And so this is a safe way to go about this. What if we were to look at this actual PDF in the sandbox from any money, what would we see? If we click into the actual running of the sandbox here, what we have, and the cool thing about any run is it actually shows you screenshots as it opens it. You can kind of mouse over this back and forth and it appears that is, this is a fake Apple App Store receipt that's trying to say, hey, you bought a $20 game, please click on this thing and probably all of the links are just this malicious uh, page here. So my guess is if you were to follow this link, you would probably find it's a Apple credential phishing page or something like that, trying to steal people's uh, iCloud accounts. Let's go to our second sample and a different thing that we might run into also quite commonly. Uh, Hybrid Analysis is another website that I like a lot. And as long as you sign in and just make a free username on Hybrid Analysis, you can download samples as well. And the same is true of, of any run. If you go into Hybrid Analysis, you can go to Report Search, you can go to Advanced Search, and then you can type in I want to find any kind of document here, very similar to anyone. So I just chose doc and I chose, I want something that's malicious and I ran a search for it and I already found one that I'm interested in. It's called invoice uh, something, something 11, 12, 2020, and then some random numbers dot doc. Oftentimes phishing emails are a invoice themed document. So this one is probably going to be malicious. The sandbox tells us that right off the bat, but again, let's see if we can do this the manual way. Word document is a little bit different than a PDF. They are a much more complex file type. We can't just generally use strings on them and get any kind of meaningful output. But we can sort of use some of the tools that are built into Remix to get a quick idea if this is a malicious file or not. One of the easiest tools to use for this is called Oli VBA. Oli is a name for the file format. So what we're going to do is we're gonna download the sample because I hadn't pre-downloaded this one. And in my downloads folder, oops, we'll see it here. The OAEE, et cetera, et cetera. This is a gzip file, so we'll just undo that. And there we go. There is our sample file right there. We're going to now run that through Oli VBA, no flags or anything like that, just run it through. Boom, there we go. So it tells us kind of down here on the bottom, a summary. There is an auto execution on document open for something trying to happen not a good sign for any kind of word document uh, it talks about some of the other suspicious characteristics here there's hex strings there's base 64 strings included in this there is a macro and it prints the macro up above this table one way that you can tell you are looking at a malicious word document is if there is a macro that automatically opens and that macro is heavily heavily obfuscated like what we're seeing here that's pretty much all you need to know. And so you can quickly go from, is this bad to absolutely this is bad with a simple command of just running Oli VBA and then the name of the file. Now, in this case, my file was not the Word doc name that it would have been sent in as phishing, but you give it the uh, phishing document and it works all the same. So 
nice easy way to check what's going on here. Now we can go a little bit deeper on this because this doesn't really tell us what's happening. And so maybe you have this information, you realize it's bad, and then you decide, all right, I'm gonna throw this into my sandbox. You throw it into the sandbox, which is what is done here. And I'm gonna have a link for both of these malicious files in the notes section. If we scroll down to what actually occurs when you run this file, we have a command.exe command here with a whole bunch of junk happening. And this happens to be base64. And I know that because there's an equal sign on the end, which is a common feature of anything that is base64 encoded just because of the way encoding works. All base64 ends in zero, one, or two equal signs. So we can actually take this a step further. This is not something you would easily be able to pull out with OLEVBA, but we can copy this and take it one step further. Let's say you have uh, this kind of code and want to understand what it does. You can take it back over here and I have it on the clipboard. I can say echo and then I can paste this and then I can pipe that to base64 d, which is another built in Linux command that will decode base64. So we hit enter on that and boom, we have some heavily, heavily obfuscated PowerShell now which is not a surprise because it is a command line command and often those are used to launch PowerShell to download and execute some more scripts or another file or something like that. Right off the bat, looking through this, I see this right here, net.webclient, which is a um, function that is commonly used for downloading additional stuff. The thing is, is I can't really see what um, site this is gonna go to. If you look a little bit here, you can kind of make out HTTPS and then the rest of it gets very, very difficult to understand. You could manually de-obfuscate this with taking out all these characters and trying to rebuild it, but that's a huge pain. So I wanna show you one final quick way that you can get around this kind of problem. If you copy and paste this whole thing, all of the actual PowerShell, you can take it over to a Windows virtual machine. And in here, if you start up the PowerShell ISE, You can paste and run just this one command and see what those variables turn into. Now, I will warn you with this one. This will infect the machine. So you need to do this in a Windows virtual machine. And in the Windows virtual machine, you need to disconnect it from the internet because you're running code that says, go download it something and run it. So before you even paste that code, here's how I would recommend you do it. You can either go into removable devices, network card, disconnect, or you can go hardcore with it and you can actually remove the networking device from your virtual machine so that there's just no way this can connect. So with the PowerShell ISE open, make sure that you are disconnected. I'm going to do that here, disconnect. And I'm going to paste this here. The internet should not work. Okay, great, perfect. I'm going to paste my malicious code here and I'm going to run it in the PowerShell ISE. All right, there we go. So conceivably, this machine is now infected. Uh, the one thing I should also say before this is if you plan on doing this multiple times, take a snapshot of this machine before you run this infection because when you're done, you're gonna want to rewind the virtual machine and then have an uninfected VM ready to go again for your next analysis. From this, we can type git variable and you'll see all these variables that were created as that was run. So in the beginning here, we see it's setting a variable called CYRD, and we can find that here, but that doesn't seem to turn into a link or anything interesting. But this one does catch my mind, this AZ8NSRD. So I don't really see that in here, uh, specifically named in the, in the front, but it's obfuscated PowerShell, so that may be a hard thing to see. Clearly, there are some links with that one. Uh, there's another link right here. Uh, maybe that's a file that's downloaded. That one we can see the full thing of. This one seems to be a list. So what we're going to do with that, we are going to type git variable name and then a, and then it will autocomplete here. So we can do that and we can pipe it to fl, which is format list, which is just going to show us the entire variable instead of kind of summarize it like we saw above. And there it is. So in a couple seconds, we took obfuscated PowerShell and we de-obfuscated it and then we extracted a whole bunch of links. So here's a bunch of them here. This one happens to be a, a duplicate of what we saw previously. 
The next step here would be to look in your SIM, look in your proxy logs, look in your firewall logs to make sure that no one has gone to any of these URLs. If anyone had gone to these URLs, well, then you need to follow up and figure out what happened next because they got to the email before you were able to get to it. Uh, you're going to want to block these and make sure no one is able to uh, get to these links in the future now that you've discovered what they are. Um, this could be taking emails out of inboxes so they don't even see the spam in the first place. This could be blocking them with the proxy uh, or all of the above. So with that, there you have it. We have a simple analysis of a PDF where we extracted a link without having to endanger ourselves. We took a Word document, we showed that it was malicious, very simply with a single tool, found a bunch of obfuscated uh, malicious macro code in it. From the running process, we were able to use a sandbox take some base64 command line parameters, take those to a Windows PowerShell ISE, and then extract the URLs that those were going to be converted into, which is probably going to tell us the next stage of downloads. So there we have it, easy malware analysis. That's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick tutorial. We have 11 more coming. If you liked what you saw here and want to help me get the word out, hit the like button and subscribe if you wanna to be told about the next 11 episodes as they come out. If you want to go deeper, we have a couple of classes available that I authored for the SANS Institute. One is SEC 450 Blue Team Fundamentals, and the other is Management 551 Building and Leading Security Operations Centers. Both of those are available live for me online as well as on demand for any time zone. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next episode.